Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaum. Straight talk about you and your money. Now from the BizTalk studios, here is Gary Kaltbaum. And welcome once again to Investor's Edge. I'm Gary Kaltbaum, I'm your host. Hey, thanks for being with us today. Glad you're here, ladies and gentlemen. Happy that you are listening. It's, uh, what is it? It's Thursday. It's uh, June 13th. It is 2024. Hope you're having a good day. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, you know what I just realized yesterday? We're off next Wednesday. Juneteenth is a federal holiday. Market is closed this coming Wednesday. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. And in case you do not know what Juneteenth is, go look it up. These are the things we need to learn about and learn from. Uh, it, it, it basically commemorates the emancipation of enslaved people. And you know what? I, I, it's actually kind of amazing that at any time in our world that that was going on, and even more amazing, it is going on in many areas around the world. That's uh, next Wednesday, uh, June 19th. Juneteenth, they call it. All right. In case you don't know, this is serious talk about everything that affects you. We do the markets, and we guide you very well. We'll do the economy the fake government statistics. Debt. Deficits. Scams. Shams. Corruption. You name it, we cover it. Thanks for joining, as always. And if you do not get this radio show in your city, we'll post it at GaryK.com. We'll also post it on our Twitter feed, which is now X. We'll also post it. A bunch of podcast apps pick us up. And you can email me. It's very simplistic if you email me. You just got to be nice. Do you know in the last couple weeks, I have had major debates with some listeners who completely disagree with me. Which means I completely disagree with them, and we do it nicely and respectfully. Versus, you know, you gotta whatever, 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 whatever. I want to start out today, if you don't mind. You can call it politics, but I call you everything. I call it as everything we deal with here, and that is your money and the future. What do you, I guess you still call him President Trump, right? You know, I've said Mr. Trump, and I shouldn't do that. Every ex-president is a president. President Trump, oh, I'm sorry. In case you don't know, President Carter, Jimmy Carter, who's been in hospice for a while. Uh, the son, I believe, is now reporting that 75% of his time, he is now out. So... We're talking late stage hospice, and we'll talk Jimmy Car. Well, he, listen, he's left, 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 led a full life, but I believe he has spent his after life after the White House doing good deeds, not creating um, philanthropic stuff and making yourself worth a couple of hundred million dollars. Didn't do that. Anyway, we'll discuss that more uh, as, as we, well, I guess the words as we get closer, as, as, but let's talk President Trump. Uh, he met today with various CEOs. And in case you do not know, a bunch of Silicon Valleyites billionaire valleyites that would never vote Republican are backing him with big dollars. 
I'm amazed. I'm amazed who is backing him. In his meeting today with CEOs, let me talk you and industry and your money. So you have an understanding and we can compare. President Trump said he is going to lower taxes and reduce regulations. He felt that too much regulations are onerous. Where do we hear that word from? I'm raising my hand. He believes, like we believe, less of them, more of us. Now, let me state for the record, Donald Trump ran big deficits, and this is before COVID. Spent, immediately jumped all over and gave a ton of money to the Defense Department. And we believe in defense, but the numbers they're getting, wow. I digress. While Donald Trump is telling everybody, we're going to lower your taxes. Joe Biden said he's going to raise all of your taxes. Every one of you, whether you make 50 grand a year or 50 million a year, they're trying to tell you that's not true, but we're going to give you a fact. This is a pure fact. President Biden wants to roll back the Trump tax cuts completely. That's the corporate taxes. And by the way, there's a sunset provision, and that's the issue. The whole idea is to extend them. That's one big mistake by Trump to have a deadline for the tax cuts that he had. You cannot piecemeal a bill. You cannot say, like Biden is trying to lie to everybody, only people above 400000 a year will, not, will lose the tax cuts. Anybody below, it's a blatant lie. Not a fib, not a mistake. Remember, nothing by accident out of D.C., He has also called for unrealized capital gains. Now, I do believe because if you make too much money, they hate you, unless you're going to give them a lot of dollars for their campaign. I don't think that's from dollar one. I am not sure what the number is. They have been kind of hiding the number about how much you'd have to be making before doing that. And let me explain unrealized capital gains. Imagine if, let's say you're wealthy, you know, the privileged few, those scummy, successful people that Marxists hate. Imagine if you bought when, after the split, we're going to use, uh, NVIDIA was uh, 50 bucks. it's now almost 130 You're up $80, and let's say you had 1,000 shares. You're up $80,000. But you don't want to sell. What they're saying at the end of the year, on December 31st, if you're up $80,000 and you didn't sell, you are going to pay taxes on that $80,000 that you did not sell. And what if you don't have the money to pay those taxes? Oh, you may just have to sell, forced into it. They're insane. They're illogical. These people should not be running a lemonade stand and they get elected and voted in on utter moronic stupidity. What else? Well, they've been floating wealth taxes. Hey, you got too much money? We'll take the machete out and cut you with the knees. Don't worry about the fact that we taxed you if you live in California, state, local, federal, Don't worry that if you have too much when you die, we're taxing you then. We're going to tax you now a wealth tax every year. That's been floated, but I don't think that's getting anywhere. I don't know if they're that insane. 
And they want long-term capital gains tax to go from 20 up to 44, which is another imbecilic, moronic, doofus idea to keep long-term cap. Number one, I think capital gains is a taxes stink anyhow. That's your saved money being invested, uh, but they got to come after everything, right? Okay, right. So up next, I'm going to give advice to President Trump on what I would say right out of the debate. And then the markets. This is the one and only Investor's Edge. Hi, I'm Gary Kalbaum, host of the nationally syndicated radio show, Investor's Edge. We're not just handsome radio people. We manage investors' money for a living, specializing in fee-based discretionary money management. No big commissions, just a fee on the assets that's managed. We also provide a full range of personalized services, including retirement planning, fixed income, and educational needs, all to assist you in achieving your financial goals. Understanding not all individuals have the same needs, we'll carefully evaluate your personal goals to determine a proper investment strategy. If your current approach to investing is not getting you to where you would like to be, call us to make an appointment for a complimentary portfolio review. The number to call is 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. Investment advisory services offered through Kaltbaum Capital Management. It's time to switch on the integrator units and get the brain cells working. You're listening to... Hey, this promises to be fun. Investor's Edge. The last bastion of quality programming. With Gary Kaltbaum. It doesn't get better than this. Okay. So if I'm President Trump, I become Gary. You know, me. And in the debate, when you have an opening, the first opening, I guess you can say something at the beginning, introduce yourself. This is what I would state. And I listen, I know what you're going to say, January 6th, all the other things he's done, but we're dealing from going forward. I would start with, you know, it's supposed to be we the people. We, the people, are not supposed to be working for the government. The government's supposed to be working for us. Here are Joe Biden's proposals on you, the people, and what he, how, what he wants to do and what he wants to extract from you. Here are my, not just proposals, these are what I will do. And then I go through, extend our tax cuts. We will not raise long-term capital gains. You will not have a wealth tax. There will not be an unrealized capital gains tax. We will not do any of that. And in fact, we also think that regulations really are, they restrict. We're going to be looking at them from start to finish. And will we need regulations? We'll keep them, but my goodness gracious. And you see what they're doing in the DOJ on the antitrust department. If you're too big, you're bad. No, we think if you're too big, that's because you did something right. That's what I'd be doing. Big time. We'll see how it goes. You know where we stand. You know where we stand. It is we the people. They're killing us. You don't feel it physically, but six to seven billion dollars is being added to our debt every day and grows every day. And they lie about it every day. And the media never asks about it every day. Joe Biden could not last one minute with me interviewing him. And I do it respectfully. First question, how do you keep telling the people of this great country that you lowered the deficit when you are running record deficits and by far? Let me show you the numbers. How is it possible you are telling everybody you have lowered spending and you are breaking every track record on spending? How is that possible? 
You said you cut child poverty in half. How did you do that? That's how we'd start. And he'd be walking out. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Got a few months left. But uh, economically, if Trump comes in and not only does what he says on taxes and regulations, but also he's talking the size of government, that he'll have to prove because he raised the size of government when he came in, just like a normal politician does. So excuse me, President Trump, we're going to have to, if you win, we'll... The jury will still be out. We'll see what you do, because we know what happens when you get into D.C. You know what the mother's milk is. And that's that. That's how we start. And if you don't know how important it is when you have a Marxist in the White House, I can't help you. And I don't use Marxist as a pejorative word. I'm not cursing him out. I'm telling you what he is. Marxism economically is what I call control freakism. They do it with rules, regulations, fees, fines, mandates, taxes, and giveaways. He's writing the book on it. He's writing the book. And no, we're not saying he's Stalin or Pol Pot. But economically, he's taken us towards... Everything this country is against. And that's upward mobility, hard work, earns you your keep. Meritocracy. You win if you beat the next guy. Competition. Why do you think all these companies are dropping the equity? Equity. Well, if you're not the right type... Even though you're better than the next guy, we're not hiring you. Insanity, ladies and gentlemen. I believe in equity of opportunity, not outcome. I don't care what you look like, how you sound, big, tall, short, fat, skinny, white, black, Hispanic, race, creed, color, does not matter to me. Equal opportunity. Equity of opportunity. But not equity of outcome. That's what is known as fair. That's what is known as earning. That's all. Okay. The markets. So the Dow was down 250, only fa- finished down 65. That's fine. The S&P up 12. I wonder why. Why was the S&P up 12 if the Dow was down 65? Oh, the NASDAQ was up 59. NASDAQ 100 was up 111. And how did that happen? Well, NVIDIA was up another 450, which was another 45 points, $45 pre-split. And Qualcomm was up three. And Apple was up a buck and change. And... Broadcom was up 180, even though reported a whopping 6% earnings growth, even though Procter & Gamble and Pepsi both have better earnings growth. It's AI, 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 O. And as we've said to you, we're riding it. Personally, we're riding it. But boy, oh boy, we got our eyes wide open. Because it's getting... A little 99-ish. What do I mean by that? 15 up, 24 down on the New York. 14 up, 27 down on NASDAQ. Wait a minute. 1,400 stocks up today on the NASDAQ and 2,700 down with the NASDAQ up 59, NASDAQ 100 up 111. Yep. Do you know what's going on? We're at the widest chasm of technology versus the rest of the market in percentage terms market cap ever. Blown away 99. And widest chasm on the mega caps. Like we've never seen. But until they die, we ride. How it finishes up, I have no idea. 
In 99-2000, it was a climactic move in a bunch of names. And the NASDAQ itself. Would I like climactic if it's going to end that way? Hell yeah. That means there's going to be a lot more to go. Hell yeah. But we don't know yet. And we don't try to predict. We'll let the market decide on a daily basis. All we can tell you is another good day. And now you can add in Super Micro, SMCI. That's one of those names. We'll explain that one up next. And others. This is the one and only Investor's Edge. Investor's Edge. He's got to be pleased with that. The crowd is just on his feet here. He's a Cinderella boy. Uh. With Gary Coltbaum. Comes highly recommended. You're going to feel better if you talk to him. And welcome once again to Investor's Edge. So we were just saying that uh, Supermicro is just one of those AI names that may have woken up today. Uh, volume was uh, 87% uh, better than average. Still got a lot of work to do. We'll see what happens. Our issue remains the broad market's just terrible. And I mean terrible. If you have one of those 100 stock diversified whatever, and you own some oils, you're getting squashed. If you own some uh, out-of-favor financials, you're getting squashed. If you own regional banks, you're getting squashed. How about in the Dow, if you own McDonald's in the Dow... You're getting squashed when you should own Chipotle. By the way, we're not saying buy, sell, short, or cover Chipotle. We're just giving you an example of strength versus not. If you own Johnson & Johnson, you're getting squashed. Instead of Eli Lilly, where you're making money off of, you know, the, you know, what, uh, you know whatever. By the way, I'm reading about stories on these weight loss wonder drugs that there's going to be massive amounts of lawsuits. And I was reading that the last two days, and I was wondering if it would affect the stock, and Eli Lilly hit another high today. So obviously not yet. And you know what I think? I don't care what you're taking. When you come off of it, you're going to gain back that weight unless you do something with the change of life. If you own Disney, you're down 50% from 2021. If you own Boeing, you're down 60% from 2019. And I'm just not picking out any company, Disney and Boeing. Johnson & Johnson. Intel. If you own Intel just from January, you're down 40-some-odd percent. But if you bought NVIDIA, you'd be up 120. By the way, at semiconductor versus semi. This is what we mean by you better be on game. If you own the transports recently, yikes. If you've owned the small caps instead of the large caps... Double yikes. Oh, and full disclosure, we tried buying the small caps twice in the last six months, and we stopped out twice. Fool me once, shame on you. 
So the broad market is just, which has us paying a lot of attention. Because in case you do not know, in 99, 2000, they were leaving everything for dead while buying into Techland. I still remember, this is a true story. Somebody I was working with, I'm not going to mention the company's name, but she had clients at a major housing company. I believe she had the CEO, the CFO as clients. She asked me to go down with her to meet with them. She trusted me. And I remember the CEO asking me, why don't they buy my stock? I said, because they're buying everything else but your stock. The housing stocks were at one times earnings. Because all that money was coming out of them, as well as other things, and into Nortel, Lucent, DMC, uh, you know, the whole list. Until they all topped. And what do you think bottomed? While the whole internet thing and tech thing topped, housing stocks. Why? They were trading at one time's earnings. So what we are watching in real time, and it's not everything, and it's not even close to 99 yet. But I'm just letting you know it's going that way on a daily basis. The market is really going narrow towards here, and I'm just pointing to my right. And just completely ignoring here, I'm pointing to my left. And when we do our webcast for our peeps, we do separate webcasts just showing bad. And I'm amazed I'm able to sell, show hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stocks. By the way, in the Dow, I think 20 out of 30 look like crap. In bearish phase, why do you think the Dow is underperforming? Fortunately for the Dow, Apple is better. Amazon, no great shakes lately, but not hurting. Microsoft's at new highs. Walmart's at new highs. But it's few and far between. So we'll be ready. We don't know exactly how it's going to play out. And we've been thinking, if we end up with another 99, and we're not saying we are, but if we do, here's how we're going to do it with you on radio. We're just going to keep telling you what you have to keep avoiding, keep accentuating, and as the accentuation gets wider, be a little more vociferous in letting you know possibly getting closer and then as a student of climactic moves in the market if we get one of those oh we'll be ready now whether or not we get one of those i don't know but i have to tell you things like the semiconductor index the socks It sure is acting like it. Certain names, it's sure acting like it. So stay tuned. We're working harder than ever. And I don't even know if we can work harder than we already have. We're focused. And if that time comes, we shall be ready in advance. Why? We've studied history. We've studied precedent, not what somebody says, but actually how the roadmap of markets. And when you get outlier events in the market, that's where you have to be even more focused. And we've been getting a little bit of outlier. And outlier simply means away from what the norm is. And we're getting some of that. We're getting a decent amount of that. And as always, if anything changes, we'll let you know. We just had some changes. What were we talking about for weeks? 
Oh, strength, copper, aluminum, uranium, gold, silver. They've all topped pretty good for now. And a bunch of them breaking down. What were we saying? China was much better. Not anymore. And why? Because the two big names, Alibaba and Baidu, acting like the south end of a northbound jackass. So things changed. You may have a big change with Adobe tomorrow. This stock has been squashed, Adobe, a, a software stock. They reported earnings after the close. They were came in as expected. The guidance now is okay. Stock's up 14% in the aftermarket. Gapping up. We'll see what tomorrow brings. It only gets back some of the trashing it has. But that's a big name that could be of import. We'll see. Changes. But right now, most of the mega cap tech, semiconductors, AI, continue to rule the day and even today. But there'll be a time where they get squashed. And they will get squashed. Ultimately, when they get so over-owned, over-loved, over-leveraged, and overpriced, Didn't happen today. Up next, whatever else. I'm Gary. This is the one only Investor's Edge. Listening to. What are we waiting for? Well, what are you waiting for? One, two, ready, go. Action! Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaugh. Welcome once again to Investor's Edge. I got about 30 people email me about Tesla today. Uh, Tesla finished up uh, $5.18 after being up uh, about 13. Uh, Musk won whatever to get his money. There was a big thing about him not getting paid what he made, and they said that was the reason, but it didn't finish great. But all I can tell you right now in the aftermarket, it's up eh, $3 to make it up 8 and a half on the day. Still needs plenty of work. It's got a relative strength of 17. That means 83% of all stocks have been outperforming it. But we do know when Tesla gets going, oh, it gets going. Uh, In the news, and you know, we don't mean to pick on California, but when they're running the place into the ground um, and totally disrespecting the citizenry, knowing that a lot of them are never leaving, they can't leave, that's where their home is and their family is, Uh, CVS is now speeding up the closure of their stores in and around San Francisco, parts of Los Angeles and Oakland. Uh, They are now considering the possibility of pulling out of California entirely. Uh, Their reasoning, mass theft with no consequences. And here's a quote, general lawlessness throughout the state. The margins are already thin. And they can no longer support the stores in California off of the backs of their stores in certain other states that don't have the problem. What did we tell you about some areas? If you shoplift $949, no problem. $950 is a problem. So the crooks are walking into stores with calculators and adding up and leaving 
and the little leeway, leaving with 940 bucks and just come back the next day. I have never seen more moronic leaders, and I use that word lightly, of states and cities in my life than these people in certain states, the judges, the DAs. They are sick in the mind. They do not care about their citizens. We're reporting to you about store after store, restaurant after restaurant closing down in California because of the latest moronic move. Anyway, that's CVS, but don't worry. They only have a ton of them there, and don't worry, that's only jobs that are going to go by the wayside. And don't worry, Gavin Newsom, don't ask me why, will still get elected, even though he's just destroying the joint and running bazillion dollars in debt. I got news for you. They're easy to get picked on. They've earned it. They've really earned it. In the news, our Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, says the United States debt load is in a reasonable place. Do you hear my silence? The nerve of this woman who was enabled and been part of running two to three trillion dollar yearly deficits to make that statement. And she was doing it in an interview. And I'm just thinking to myself, if I was doing that interview, I'd have to no four letter words. But my next line would be, who are you trying to kid? They're psychopaths, control freaks. They have to be taken out of power. In the news... Just letting you know, and, and this is a moving target, but trucking employment is falling. Uh, actually, they're saying it's collapsing, trucking employment. I don't know if that means a ton, but trucking, you know, as we've told you, trucking is in a bear market in the stock market and something to watch. In the news, the top seven stock in the S&P 500 are now at an all-time high of 32% of the S&P. The top seven stocks are 32% of the S&P. The other 493 are 68%. Needless to say, the top seven stocks had better perform or you better be out of the S&P. So far, so good. And by the way, that's of import. In the news, just when you have a chance, go look at a chart of government jobs since the year 2000. You got me on that? And one has to ask the question, where are those jobs going to? It really is a valid question. No, really. And that's the uh, ever popular over the top uh, news of the day. Uh, and again, a lot of questions on Broadcom when I say 6% earnings growth, they had 6% earnings growth. That was nothing. Yet the stock was up 100 and some, uh, almost $200. They announced the 10 for 1 stock split. I don't know what component of the move is because of that, but leave no doubt. Since the NVIDIA stock split has worked, follow the leader. And next up will be Chipotle, a 50 for 1 stock split on Chipotle. That is amazing. And it just tells you how good the stock is done. Tomorrow, I'll be on with Neil Cavuto, uh, noon hour. 
check it out, Fox Business Network. Same time tomorrow for radio. So have a great evening. Drive carefully. And when you get home, do like we do. Quite simple. Make sure you hug your family. Make sure you hug your children. They will feel better. You will feel better. I promise. Peace out, all. We're working for you. We the people. Good night. This has been Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaum on BizTalk. To listen to past episodes or to get in contact with Gary, go to GaryK.com. That's GaryK.com.